As an emblem of the ecology movement, the polar bear attracts more fascination, more debate than other perhaps more endangered species. We now know that in some areas of the Arctic, numbers are declining rapidly, but in others they're stable or even increasing. To assess the impact of global warming on the bear's survival, we're beginning a series of special reports. Our science editor, Lawrence McGinty, and a News at 10 film crew have travelled to the edge of the Canadian Arctic so we can see for ourselves the effects of climate change and confront the contradictory claims. Here then, the first of Lawrence's reports on the truth about polar bears. Powerful, majestic, iconic, top predator on the tundra. On the shores of the Hudson Bay, it's minus 40. Cold, but not cold enough for the polar bears. They're desperate to get back onto sea ice where they can hunt seals, but the sea ice is forming late. These bears haven't eaten for four or five months. They're losing weight rapidly, two pounds every day. They're under stress. No one knows that more than Dr. Stephen Anstrup. He's studied polar bears in Alaska for three decades. He joined me on our tundra buggy to explain the evidence behind the decision to list the polar bear as threatened. Evidence like cannibalism. Large adult males that were clearly stalking, killing and eating other bears. So it wasn't a situation where bears were having a fight over a mate or something like that and one of them was killed in the process and the other bear decided, well, as long as I've got a dead bear here, I'll go ahead and eat it. It was actual stalking and killing and then consuming other animals. You know, that sort of thing we just hadn't seen in all the years I'd been there. Here in the Hudson Bay, temperatures are rising by half a degree every decade, and the number of bears has fallen by almost a fifth since 1980. Well, welcome to the uh, ITV News buggy. Driven inside by the cold, Stephen showed me how they study anaesthetized bears out on the sea ice, taking measurements like weight. The live weight is very important for understanding growth patterns and for understanding uh, changes in condition of the animal from season to season and from year to year. In this area, the body weight of females has fallen by nearly 20% in the last 25 years. Just one sign of trouble. Well, I have to say I'm pessimistic about what's happening to polar bears. I've been studying polar bears in the southern Beaufort Sea for 28 years, and the projections that we developed last year uh, based on the data that we have and the climate models projecting what the future sea, I of sea ice is uh, going to be, those projections suggest that polar bears will be absent from the Beaufort Sea of Alaska by the middle of this century. Capturing and studying bears on sea ice, as Stephen Amstrup does, is becoming more and more dangerous. One reason why they're looking at this device, an infrared camera that might be able to detect pregnant bears in their dens below the snow from the heat they give out. Stephen's colleague Ian Sterling is the godfather of polar bear research. He studied them for 37 years. We flew with both of them to look at the new infrared system. Within half an hour, the heat-seeking camera had spotted a pregnant bear dug in below the snow, showing up as a black blob. Yeah, right in that, yeah, right in yeah, that, right that, yeah, yeah. And clearly not a tree. Yeah, yeah. 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 That is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty neat. That's definitely a den. Yeah. Knowing how many bears give birth in dens is important because scientists believe bears are still having cubs, but they're not surviving. It's crucial to the controversial debate about numbers. Critics say numbers aren't declining in 11 of the 13 separate populations of bears in Canada. That makes Ian Sterling angry. No, that, that's simply not correct. There's, uh, there are five of them are, uh, are declining for a variety of reasons, mainly uh, effects of climate warming or over-harvesting. Also, two of those populations were so severely over-harvested, they're now classified as increasing, but that's because they were reduced to such uh, minimal rates. They can't do anything but increase if you, if you stop hunting on them. I don't see a lot around me to be optimistic about, quite frankly, but I can't believe that humans as a, as a species can can't come to some global consensus that this is the most serious thing that's happened in, in recorded history and we really have to do something about it collectively. All this doesn't mean that the polar bear is on the brink of extinction, but its grip on its icy world is ever more perilous.